Being that we're in the really the home stretch of WrestleMania season, we know when you get to this point in time of the year that wrestling fans can start to feel nostalgic and they talk about their favorite WrestleMania matches, their favorite WrestleMania moments, and certainly people put out every year what their all-time WrestleMania dream card would be. And that's what I wanted to do today, mix it up a little bit and give you my all-time WrestleMania dream card with some key and important qualifiers. So as I put together these qualifiers and then actually tried to build out a WrestleMania dream card, it was not as easy of an exercise as I thought because I could only have 12 matches max, and I think I ended up with 11 here. You could only use matches that actually took place at WrestleMania, so not like a fantasy booking WrestleMania dream card, but matches that actually happened at WrestleMania. You could only use each wrestler once. Also made it interesting by saying you could only have one match from a particular WrestleMania, no more than two men's world title matches. You can only use a title once, period. So if you have a tag team title match from one year's WrestleMania, that's it. No matter what, can't have any more. You've got to use at least one tag team match and got to at least have one match with women. And as I was put together these qualifiers and said, okay, let me build out a WrestleMania card. It, it took me longer than I thought it was going to because I would sit there and say, man, I'm going to do Hogan Warrior at WrestleMania 6 or Hogan Rock at WrestleMania 18. But then I said, oh, crap, that means I can't do Rock and Austin at WrestleMania 15. Or where the hell is Andre the Giant on the card? You know, what about Savage? You know, and this is spanning my entire lifetime as a WWF slash E fan, as a wrestling fan, mind you. So, you know, a couple other things I try to keep in mind is I try to keep it representative of all of the eras of WrestleMania, not just solely biased to my history and my nostalgia from childhood. Also trying to make sure that I was thinking about, like, you're booking an all-time WrestleMania. You want it to be the biggest and best that you possibly can. So you need a great combination of star power and match quality, storytelling, all of that, right? You have to have that. You can't just sit there and book 11 flippy kicky matches and say that's the greatest WrestleMania of all time. That's stupid. Just like having 11 slow plotting matches would be really stupid. So with all that said, all these qualifiers, it was easier said than actually done. I present to you my all-time WrestleMania dream card. I also tried to put this in like a show order that would actually flow together well. Also tried to avoid having re too many repetitive stipulations. Um, and one thing I'll call out here, there were certainly some key omissions from this fantasy all-time WrestleMania card from The Big Show. You know, that is one, obviously. Randy Orton, Batista, and they didn't make the cut. Roman Reigns didn't make the cut, in part because of the no-repeat, like, title matches. So there are a lot of guys. Ric Flair didn't make it. As much as I wanted to put like him and HBK at 24 on the card, I couldn't because I went with another retirement match. I didn't want to have two retirement matches on the same WrestleMania. It sounds depressing as hell. But anyways, I kick it off with the WrestleMania 21 opener, Eddie Guerrero versus Rey Mysterio. As much as I would love to start with Owen Hart versus Bret Hart at WrestleMania 10 as the opener, because I still think that's the greatest opening match in WrestleMania history. I got Bret Hart booked for something else much bigger. Eddie Guerrero, Rey Mysterio, I'm not going to put a WrestleMania card out there without having those two guys on. That's the solid opener. There you go. Get everybody into the flow. The second match might surprise some of you. It's from WrestleMania 34, the mixed tag match, Kirk Angle and Ronda Rousey versus Triple H and Stephanie McMahon. Transparently, part of this was to have a little bit of a mix here, like mix up some of the styles of matches. Again, you're talking about wanting to get star power involved, but it's also the fact of, I didn't feel right having an all-time WrestleMania dream card without having Kurt Angle and Triple H in there somewhere. So it's less a reflection of Ronda Rousey or even Stephanie McMahon. It's more of a reflection of, I needed to find a spot for Kurt Angle and Triple H, mix up the card a little bit, so I've got them going second. Then third, WrestleMania 14, Kane versus The Undertaker. Some of you might be surprised of all the Taker matches at Mania I could choose that I went with this one. Some of you may be disappointed, be like, man, I thought he was going to go with Giant Gonzalez here. No, we'll go with that with my all-time worst WrestleMania dream card. That'll be coming up soon. The absolute worst possible WrestleMania card that you could put together. 
Uh, but as far as Kane versus The Undertaker, that match at WrestleMania 14, the semi-main event, was really damn good. You got physical peak Taker, physical peak Kane. The story was the hottest there. Makes sense for me to put that on the third match on the show. Fourth match, as much as I hate that pay-per-view to this day and everything that it represents and how overrated as shit it's been, I cannot deny that that TLC match for the WWF Tag Team Championships at WrestleMania 17 hasn't stood the test of time and over two decades later still remember to this day. So I'm absolutely going to have to put it on this card. Edge and Christian versus the Hardys versus the Dudleys. Yeah, you got to go there. Like that is the most memorable tag title match of WrestleMania history. It has to be on the card. I had a challenge next though with what do I do with Shawn Michaels? And there was a big piece of me that says I want to put him and Razor Ramon, WrestleMania 10, who's the real Intercontinental Champion, ladder match on the card. But then I'm thinking to myself, I've already got a TLC match, then why do I want to go and have a freaking ladder match? Um, then I was like, oh, maybe I'll do Sean versus Kurt at WrestleMania 21. I ended up landing on Sean versus Jericho at WrestleMania 19, because that was a damn good match, told a great story. Um, you know, one of those, you just throw two guys out there and they could go tear the house down. Also, I couldn't do a retirement match with Shawn Michaels and Ric Flair. So that's why I went with Shawn Michaels and Chris Jericho because the next match, and again, this is my all-time dream WrestleMania card. It's a retirement match at WrestleMania 7, The Ultimate Warrior versus the Macho King Randy Savage. And when you think about this show, you know, when you think about this match in particular, you know, this is all about the big payoff of all those years together and now they're no longer together. Elizabeth comes out post-match and saves the Macho King from Scary Sherry, and they get together and they hug and the crowd goes nuts. I just wanted to have a WrestleMania card with the Macho Man on it somehow. Sue me, okay? And Warrior, frankly, had played a key role in some of those early WrestleManias. He deserves a spot in my all-time WrestleMania card as well. Uh, then I flipped to the Hollywood backlot brawl at WrestleMania 12, including all the bad O.J. Simpson references, Roddy Roddy Piper versus Goldust. I mean, that shit, again, is one of those gimmick matches that stands the test of time two and a half decades later. For my money, from a pure entertainment value standpoint, that is easily the best match on that show, other than maybe watching Warrior uh, Squash Hunter, which I almost put on this card, by the way, to see God get his comeuppance in such spectacular, quick fashion. Uh, but it's certainly a more enjoyable viewing experience going back and watching it years later than the Iron Man match was, which I've always felt is kind of a little overrated and feel even more so as the years go by. But yeah, give me Roddy Roddy Piper versus Goldust in part as much as anything else because I had to find a way to put Piper on this card. You don't have WrestleMania without a Piper. He has to be on the show. The next match, you're going to cringe a little bit because you're saying of all the Rock matches, you didn't just go with The Rock versus Hogan at WrestleMania 18. And I grant you, but as much as I don't like to admit it, Cena has been a huge part of WrestleMania for a long time. You know, you could talk about my excluded Orton and Batista and Big Show and some of those other guys. But when you think about guys in multiple main events, guys that have been in featured spots, guys that have meant a lot to that show over the years, to that company over the years, John Cena means more than all of those guys when it comes to the company and when it comes to Mania. So yeah, I got to find a way to put him on there. And because I didn't do Rock and Hogan at 18 for another reason, in part because I wanted to get Andre on the show, I did The Rock versus John Cena because as much as anything else, to be able to watch The Rock come in and pin John Cena clean, one, two, three, in the middle of the goddamn ring, you damn right I'll sign up for that shit. I'll take it. Then I flipped to the SmackDown Women's Championship match at WrestleMania 37 and Bianca Belair versus Sasha Banks. And, you know, when you think about the his long, long history of WrestleMania, there haven't been a lot of high-profile great women's matches. And as much as I'm not a fan of Sasha Banks, like kind of as an in-ring performer, frankly, some ways, the person and the personality, I cannot deny that that match I felt really delivered at WrestleMania 37. And when you look at what matches you could put on there, got to have a little mixture here. I'm going to go with Bel Air and Sasha Banks in the third to last match on the show. Uh, the semi-main event, I'm going with the submission match at WrestleMania 13. Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Bret Hart. It is certainly Stone Cold Steve Austin's 
best match at WrestleMania. Although I think sometimes the match between him and Rock at WrestleMania 15 gets forgotten. A lot of dorks will point to 17 being better, but again, fuck that match and fuck that show. But give me Stone Cold Steve Austin versus Bret Hart in a submission match in the semi-main event spot, especially knowing what's coming in the main event. It's going to be different. It really, really, really would work here. This is a match, again, that really stands the test of time that would work today in 2013 just like it did in 1997. But if you know me, you already knew what was going to be my all-time WrestleMania dream card main event. It's the WWF Championship match at WrestleMania 3. It's Andre the Giant versus Hulk Hogan. It has to be. You've got Andre. You've got Hulk in front of 93,000 people. Bobby the Brain Heenan in Andre's corner. No, the match wasn't a visual masterpiece. But again, if I'm talking about matches that you think about the most when it comes to WrestleMania, at the end of the day, this is it. As much as it is easy to hate on Hogan, as much as he deserves the scorn for some of the things he said in the past decade or so of his life, as much as he gets criticized for the politics and everything else, the fact of the matter is, WrestleMania is not nearly as big of a deal without Hulk Hogan. The WWE is not nearly as big of a deal as Hulk Hogan. Still to this day, he is the biggest wrestling star in the history of professional wrestling. There is no effective counter argument you could point to and say somebody else. When you think about longevity and drawing power at the top, nobody measures up. Nobody. Except maybe Andre. So when you talk about wanting to draw as much money as possible, what match is going to draw the most money or what I have the most confidence in being able to draw the most money is Andre versus Hulk. Now you can say, how much would that match land or connect in today's wrestling environment? Fair question, right? But, I mean, when you think about seminal moments in WrestleMania history, it's Hogan body slamming Andre at WrestleMania 3. That has to be the main event of my WrestleMania all-time dream card. As much as I feel like Hogan Warrior at 6 was better and Hogan Rock was better at 18, no match in WrestleMania history will ever measure up from a star power standpoint, from a big match feel, from a, oh my God, this changed the landscape type of thing. Nothing measures up to Hogan and Andre. Nothing in WWE history. And that's why out of all the options and all the choices I could have went with, that ended up being my main event for my all-time WrestleMania dream card. So there you have it. You can look at the 11 matches. I'll put them in the description box. I'm curious to know what your all-time WrestleMania dream card would be following the stipulations and qualifications that I put forth. It's easier said than done. I promise you, you have to make some interesting trade-offs. You really do. So I'd be curious to see what you got. You can let me know what you think of mine too. I can't see to wait, wait to see you guys rage against some of my choices. Oh well, it's my choices, not yours. Deal with it.